Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Manor Lords in our thriving, bustling little town of swords here. The rain has just given way to a nice day, a nice breakthrough in the clouds. Sunshine is beaming down. We've just won our battle against the dastardly Baron for the territory of Imin Ruth in our southwest here. So the battle has just ended, we've claimed the region, and I was hoping that we could actually set up a town here in this episode. We might get to that, but there's a few steps involved with why we want to do it and what we need to be able to do it. We need 250 treasury, unfortunately we're at 245 right now, just a little bit shy of the 5 extra that we need to be able to do so. And that's because we spent so much money on the retinue itself. Now, why do we want to set up another region? We've already got two. Obviously, it's just fun setting up regions, but also, I kind of want to speed up the rate of influence we're gaining. So at the manor, we were previously taxing people 5% on the tithe, taking 5% food in order for a sort of equivalent back in influence. Unfortunately, though, Swords is struggling for food a little bit. The population has boomed, and we are focusing so much on the battle and a few other things that I've not really been paying attention, but people in the comments have said, you got to watch that food, man. It's getting a little low, and we're trading in for vegetables and stuff. It's not very sustainable right now, and I agree. We'll get to that. The other region we have of the Null, on the other hand, is flush with lots of food. They're doing great. Everyone's got their vegetable patches. We have our fields, bread, berries, veg, all good. Quite low on meat, actually. Why would that be? Oh yeah, we did move these. Anyways, I'm getting distracted. So, over here, we do have a 10% tax on the tithe, right? 10% setting. And that's given us a decent rate of influence gain per month. But it's still only like 30 or 40. So it's going to take quite a long time to build up the 2,000 that we require in order to actually attack the Baron for the remaining regions. It's not just for one, it's like two, four, six, eight. It's a lot of influence. Now, you get some from fighting bandits and stuff, but there's none on the map anymore. We're relying on them attacking us. So, long story short, <laughs> the way we get more influence is we set up multiple towns. We build brand new manors and churches, and that will boost our influence to where we want it to be, allowing us to conquer more regions. Right, so now we're all up on the same page. Let's play the game. Now, we're going to just have to wait for certain things, like I said, and we also want to do a lot with swords and sort out its food situation as it currently stands. There's a lot to do. We have 17 unassigned families here and 79 people working, or families. 311 population in total with a lot more living space than we currently have. So I'm actually going to start demolishing a couple of the far out houses and building brand new ones and leveling up a lot of the ones we have. The reason being, just not happy with the grid-like nature of this. I was kind of envisioning something a bit different, but I kind of forgot that the plots would just be these big rigid row housing gardens basically. It's not just even that I forgot. I thought maybe the workshops, for instance, would have bigger buildings behind them and things. But anyways, we can do better. I like more of the, this kind of street here, right? I've gushed over this one many times. The differentials in height and things like that I just think look really good. And then we want more windy, more organic streets building around our market. I've also been paying attention to the market. And there's a lot of empty stalls that never get filled with anything. So I'm thinking we could go in there, manually delete them and do a few things to encourage sending our food out further, because that's another problem we have. Market reach isn't the best. There's a bunch of things people have been talking about that you can do to encourage it, and also there's a patch on the way. I'm not playing with the patch right now. It's in a beta phase. You can jump in and test it out if you want to. I've just decided not to. I'll basically just play it when it comes out. If there was any, in my opinion anyway, meaningful buildings or content like that, I would definitely jump into it, bugs and all. But right now, it's more like a balance patch that's under testing to get field out, like, you know, to see if it needs adjustment. So I'll just wait. That's okay. You know, but if there was new mechanics and new buildings, I'd feel a bit different about it. Anyways, that's just me. All right, so with all of that established, let's get building. It's been taking a while here. Waffling on. So I was thinking of building in this little outcropping here. Got a nice circle here. Building around the back of the church, adding some extra housing plots in. And we'll try to make use of all that space. Maybe we can even rotate. Interesting. I just wonder if we could get more of these double plots in. That might be alright, actually, because these ones are close and then there's some doubles on the side. Alright, let's go with that. So that's six burgers plots with a potential for basically eight. When we add the extra two, excuse me. Alright, so we'll let them get working on that. We've got our new ones that we just placed down in the previous episode here. These can be all upgraded and expanded, but with 17 unassigned workers, like construction workers, and how many ox do we have? Six. That should be a pretty good rate of bringing stuff over there. What I'm also going to do is just move our stables just a bit further back. 
So a bit further out towards the hunting cabins, because I want a second granary in here. And I want them because I think that we need more granary workers distributing food. Now the problem with, I need to move this, but the problem with that is it's basically full at the moment of stuff. So we need to set up another granary that they can move stuff to as a temporary bit, temporary granary. And then when this is empty, delete it and then move that back over. So it's like this whole thing. So we're just going to get the ball rolling on that right now. It's the best way I can think to do it. Try maybe just place it somewhere here. Shouldn't take too long. We'll give them a higher priority on that. So they're going to get that done. Once that's built, they're going to delete this one. They'll move everything into that one. That gives me the clearance then to add two more in. <laughs> and uh, I'm hoping that'll just make things go a little bit quicker. We're also going to start demolishing some of these now. Unfortunately, that's going to get rid of some of the vegetables. But I think a lot of them have actually been harvested recently. Not all of them, but you can see them out there doing it now, actually. And the reason for this is I'd like to have a smaller, more of a circular effect around this marketplace here. Now, there's a few industrial buildings here that we could maybe bring a road in together around that. That's kind of a fine, you know, that, that area is fine. We don't have to do too much with it. But this would be nice if we could wrap around this way. That's at least my vision for it. So maybe just delete this one as well. So these will probably change also, but just not immediately, not all at the same time. They also do a bunch of things for me, like the breweries are there. The cobblers, the fletchers, that kind of thing. So that's as far up as I'll go for now. And that should still leave us with... How many housing is that? It's 98. And we currently have 80, 97, 96. Okay, good. Yeah, so 96 families with room for 98. It's perfect. As we are currently gaining two per month. Now, it's 5,400 on the regional wealth. Hasn't ticked over just yet. Just trying to think of what else have I mean, been meaning to do. It's a lot of construction work. Let's check out all these problems. So expose goods from the houses that we destroyed. That's in the pantry. Not enough stable space for the goats that have been created that are just going to be standing out there doing nothing now. Again, I'm not really sure. That seems like it could be a little, not a bug, but an oversight where there's nothing to do with them. You can't put them on a pasture or anything, so they just go away eventually. I'm pretty sure. So it's like, okay. Plus, we paid for them. Yeah, and I, just, I don't think you can... I think you... I don't know. I shouldn't even say. I have a feeling on a stream that I put them in a pasture, but you can't do anything with it. You don't get the hides or anything from them like you would at the back of a plot. Anyways, disconnected from the trade routes. Yeah, that's a thing that we've had before as well. Just want to see... What are we... Let's get a sit rep on what we're currently bringing in. So on the construction tab, nothing. Crops were importing barley. So I'd noticed that this has really been filled up with things and not being taken out quickly enough. There's four families on it, but I think they've got just quite a long way to go to bring everything into the town and then back out. The trade is almost arriving faster than they can keep up with like the amount of vegetables. So I feel like we need either a second trading post or like a storehouse down here that is like a, a kind of a drop box for what comes in from the trading post. So they drop it here and then maybe some store workers can bring it up further. I would hope that's the case. Maybe uh, let's just try it. Because it'd be good to just test these things out and see how does that work. So we'll pop it right there, why not? More of a test than anything, because if the traders end up bringing it all the way up into the center of town, that would be very disappointing. And we can't say, for instance, okay, then don't deliver... Well, actually, I suppose with vegetables, they do that either way for the granaries. So we probably need both down here, actually, thinking about it. Again, going to make this kind of temporary. I want to see if it works, and then we'll decide on proper placement later because I still have to kind of reconfigure this area. What I'd like is bigger plots for houses with vegetable patches. That's what I'm working towards. How are we doing on the reforce thing? It's kind of coming along actually. It's not too bad. Uh, but yeah, anyway, obviously the idea will be take your stuff, drop it in the near storehouse, and then logisticians or haulers will carry it to the other ones that, are, that need it. I'm afraid that the traders are going to be the ones bringing it into the center of the town still, so I just want to test that out as a mechanic basically. All right, we'll speed up time. Right, we're going to hop up, let them get on with all of that over here. We're going to hop over to the Knoll, where I believe the families are now one-to-one -one with the living space. So we need to expand them. So we have 526 firewood. Going to get rid of the woodcutter's lodge here. And also rid of this one. Well, we'll keep that one just in case, because we're getting close to winter again. But we want to use all of this to be a second farm and more housing and things like that. I was thinking that we could perhaps do housing even in this area here, but... Like across from the King's Road. It's a maybe. Could maybe bring this up. I'm trying to follow that contour line and then up by the church or something. So you could have that. I'm just, before I commit to it, I'm just wondering is that a good spot for more houses? There's a market right here. So it's at least close by in that front. Don't 
know if we'd want to have vegetable patches going all the way up to the manor. Just thinking out loud here. Don't always have a plan. I'm not going to commit to it because I'm not super happy with the idea of that. I'd rather more houses go over this way, I guess. So we'll just start kind of fresh estates, as it were, out this way. And we'll have to break this up so that the the farms are not just massive, just super huge. So that could be maybe one. People were saying that the reason that they thought that this farm here wasn't fully finished and it's only partially plowed is because it's greater than one Morgan. And um, a family can only do one Morgan, I guess. But I, d I didn't think that was... The I don't really get why that would be the case. I mean, I'm sure, obviously, there's a certain size where it becomes a limit. But remember, there's eight families. That being said, I do think there's actually eight fields. So one... Let me just count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's true that there's eight fields. But remember, three of them are like 0.4 Morgan. They're quite small. So I would have thought it would kind of balance out. But maybe... Yeah, maybe not. Like... Maybe eight families can do eight Morgans, and I should have maybe measured that out. That could be the case, because perhaps, like, this one, this one, and this one, when adding all of these all together, is like nine overall, you know, rather than eight. That could be the case. Never counted it, so I don't actually know. Uh, right, it's going to get this road and do the same thing. We're going to cut straight across, pretty much like that, but cut down the middle of this. So little small fields here. Could potentially do that with this one, actually, but I'm thinking more along the lines of a, a group of houses somewhere down here. What are the fertilities like? Alright, so I feel like my explanation here was probably quite bad. It was raining and it was quite dark, so we could probably not really see what was going on. So I've decided to cut that bit out and we'll catch up now with what's changed. So basically, I've added way more little roads and smaller plots in here for extra farms. I think the big farmhouse is probably going to go up here. Uh, effectively, it's drawn based on the fertilities of the area. So a good lot of barley is right available for us here, and then ember is just across the entire region, so that's going to be fine. Uh, kind of was making a bit of an odd shape there for a while, and I've tried to mask that as much as possible. If you see it, shame on you. Um, anyways, in this little location here, there's two massive plots for housing for big vegetable patches at the back. So it extends all the way to the end. And then they'll have two houses here with two additional subplots if we want to expand them. So they're pretty far away from the markets and stuff right now. So we'll probably have another market out here in the future and some extra houses going around this area as well. I would like it then if the logging industry largely fed into the people that work, you know, live here. And also then this farmhouse will for the other people that live nearby as well. So that's kind of the idea. But they obviously need a market relatively central to them. Uh, speaking of subplots, all of these houses are now getting one. So pretty much all the houses on this street here, if they could have one, they're getting one. So they're going to be upgraded. And our new market has actually just come in down here. So there was 12 stalls available. It looks like they've basically filled that immediately. So I'm waiting on some of the supplies here to get moved. And once they're moved, we can fill in that market. So I'll be back over here pretty soon. Oh, and you can see that the place is now being harvested. So they're just in the... That's interesting that they're all... all each bar is like halfway up. Crop growth 56%. It is September, it's time to harvest. But maybe they didn't fully grow. Oh no, oh, sorry. As they're harvesting, I guess the bars go down. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That's fair enough. Um, yep, so we should be loading up with all that stuff right now. We've got obviously eight farmers in there. No one's in the mill. We still have people working on bread, because I think that... If I'm not mistaken... Oh no, the flour has gone through now. Okay, we can take you off that then. And someone's going to have to get work threshing. But for now, we'll just leave a couple of people in there in the windmill, getting that flower going. We still have 10 builders, so we'll leave these guys for a while now. Actually, just want to make sure they're okay for food and everything. They seem fine. All right, we'll hop back over. Back to swords. Now, how much money do we have now? Ooh, we've got enough for that extra village, actually. But I'd like to get a little bit more. We could set them up with more stuff if we wait till we have 500. It might be the next episode or something, but they'll be off to a better start. And they'll be able to grow quicker when we do that. So... Our storehouse is under construction. That's good. They're still building over here. And we've got a new granary here. So it's time to get rid of this one. Sending our entire economy into shock. But at least it's not raining anymore. And hopefully people can work at moving these supplies as soon as possible into this granary. Clearing this area for us. And then allowing us to put down some new ones. Hopefully two in their place. So then basically the idea will be big mark in the center. Two granaries two storehouses and they'll both be the large variant of course and then houses kind of either side all wrapping around the church and the tavern and then just kind of down here generally as well that's the vision how are we doing for planks and stuff i want to also build up that manor and put the wall around it soon it's almost time 
I would say that we can prepare the area somewhat. You know, I just noticed. Is it me, or is the ground looking quite dry? Are we having a drought? Does it say? Because it kind of looks like it. I don't recall it being this brown. Or it could just be from where the trees used to be and stuff. But I dare say the grass looks like it's drying out. I know that droughts are in the game, but I've never had, had one before. <laughs> Our goats are still just out there. They're really well behaved. They don't, they don't wander. Hmm, yeah. Have to keep an eye on that. Are people living out here now? Uh, yes, they are actually. That's good. So they might like, start getting some stuff from their vegetable patches. And these houses are now all in place. That went down well. Now, speaking of, these could be given things like... Yeah, let's do all chickens. Until we decide to do something else with them. As they become tier 3, we might switch them to being like the brewery and whatever else. But we could do it with a little bit of eggs. We have 21 builders. How are they doing out here? So, storehouse is now built. We'll put two people on it. And the granary has been built out here. And that should be the final piece of construction. Now we can do some upgrades to houses. It's always bothered me that I think you can build this granary. Or you could in the demo. Yeah, you were able to build it without stone, but now you do require stone. That's good. <laughs> I remember thinking that, because in the demo, like a year ago, you built this up and all this stone got put down. And I was like, why don't you use that resource? Anyway, obviously that's changed, so that's good. Alright, so our granary is now done as well. We'll put four people in that. Why not? Four families. So now I'm hoping that when they take in things like vegetables down here, they just bring it to the nearest granary. I would hope so. You know, leaving the traders free to do more. You know what? Maybe I'll have to get rid of them. Get rid of them. Put them on. Put them back on. No, they still have their uh, <laughs> their stalls. This is something I'm still struggling with a little bit. I kind of want to do a hard reset and delete a lot of people's stalls and then just tell them where they're supposed to live and where they work. And that way, I don't want people who work out here having stalls because that means a portion of their family are walking quite far sometimes. It's not a big deal, but I just feel like it might be in some regards. Let's expand this house as well on the edge here. All right, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to build up these. Oh, a lot of them aren't actually fully done yet. So level two. Put those subplots in there. Let's get these to level two. And how are you doing with clearing all this stuff? There's still 277 meat just sitting out there, so they're going to take a while to move it all. But you can see them going to the pile. That's good. Did we have Moose Watson? What a great name. Hey, Moose. Can anyone tell me where this is from? Yo, Moose. Big shout out to whoever gets that in the comments. Moose. He says it just like that. I'll it's a hint. It's from a TV show. Name the show. And double props if you can name the person that says it. It's actually one of my low-key favorite shows ever, and I feel like it's underrated, in my opinion. But anyways. Oh, and all is finishing, so we're just going to be hopping between the two. Now, people have said, you can press T to hop between your regions, that's true, but you'll hop between the ones that have nothing in there, and I feel like it's a bit jarring for people. Just suddenly, like, boom, teleport, flash, new things on screen. Whereas, I feel like it's better just to try to pull back, and then try to pull back in, you know? Because then you know where we are. <laughs> But maybe I'm overthinking it. I'm, I'm sure people would probably just grasp it. But I know that a lot of people put this up on a second monitor. They're sort of passively watching. So I feel like, you know, seeing the camera move might help understand where we're going. All right. Anyways, for this pile, are we almost done? No, quite a lot out there as well. How's the storehouse doing for people? Let's get another family in there. Encourage people to move even more. I like this little market. It's cute. It's really small. Boom. Alright, good. Are they still building? Yep, they're still expanding. So, while everyone's building and doing stuff, I don't really have to worry about anything. What about getting some of that meat? Huh? Is there a, a hunting camp out here? Well, there's the reason we don't have any meat. I said this at the beginning of the episode. 
but it turns out we don't even have one. That's because we deleted it before. Bonk. Yeah, so it's there. So these guys obviously migrated recently, which is great. Let's just throw a hunting cabin. So what is that building? That's a forager hut for berries, which is there. Yeah, put these next to each other. I think that can look kind of nice. And we'll make a little trail that just kind of ends. Hopefully they don't migrate from a, a little trail like that. The trees, I think, eventually go away when if the road gets used, from what I understand. So I, people were telling me you don't have to like to tell them to cut down trees on roads. If people walk them, eventually the trees just kind of disappear. Didn't know that. I've never really feel like I've spotted that happening, but I, I guess I believe it because I often don't see trees on roads. So yes, you know, it seems to make sense. Um, right. So our houses out here are done. Vegetables, please. As much as I love those autumnal trees, they have to go. Alright, we'll hop back over. Back to swords. Now, let's check on these people and see where they are. So this is the traders transporting. So some of them are deep in there at the moment. As, oh. as expected, I guess. So a couple of them are on the stalls. One of them just went to that storehouse. I suppose they'll have to go to the storehouses anyway to load up the things with where, where we're trying to export. Hmm. Deposit exhausted, a mining pit. Oh, that's good. That's the clay mining pit over in the Nall. Nice, yeah, we can get rid of that then. So there was a clay furnace out here too. So they've been making our roof tiles. How much clay do we have? 83. So, you know what? I know it's in the middle of nowhere and everything. I'm just going to leave it where it is. Let them do their thing as inefficiently as possible. And then once we're totally done, we'll remove the area. Uh, although, I should tell them to at least get off that. There we go. All right, that's good enough. All right, 12 locations here, 12 down there. So that should satisfy, I suppose, some of the houses that are up and around this way, I hope. Although, arguably, the direction they have to walk is quite far actually because they have to go all the way down the street and to the right to get to the market arguably this one's just as close bit of an inefficiency there it would probably make more sense to have a market here actually those houses could do with it yeah not good is it maybe even here let's do that instead I'm gonna cancel this one <laughs> Put a brand new market in down here. Try this. So there's only six locations. Let's just see how that treats them. So that's like, you know, three for food. One or two clothes. Firewood. Could do another one in here. This is so this is like an experiment for me, obviously, right? So I'm trying to see what hap what happens when we build really small separated markets rather than over in swords where we've got one big centralized market. So I'm kind of just testing it out on purpose. So I don't know which one's going to do better. Still waiting in this area. Down to 50 though now, so that's good. Almost ready to clear it. Hmm. So I suppose what you could do with a storehouse like this is make sure it only stores things that go into here. That we're actually selling. So let's try to do that. So what am I... Importing barley. Might have to write it down because I have a terrible memory. So, barley. The next one over will be veg. That's an easy one. Next one over, clay and yarn. Okay. And charcoal. Uh, commodities, nothing for that just yet because we're waiting for the prices to stabilize. So, that'll take a while. But we could say, I suppose, tools and shoes. So that will eventually go again. And then we have mail, armor, and helmets. Mail and helm. All right, so with that information, now we can change the storehouse to only stock those things. So I'm just going to say nothing at the moment, and then I'll just toggle on the ones we need. So helmets and mail armor. We then need shoes and tools. We then need charcoal and yarn. Out uh, there. Uh, clay, veg, and barley. 
Ah, so veg is obviously just here then. So nothing else should get stored. We shouldn't be storing up meat here. Don't try not to do that anymore, please. Just veg. I don't see if that makes any difference at all to anything. But it might. It's all part of a grander scheme, and then I want to pay attention to the behavior. I can kind of do that a bit more efficiently in between episodes as well. Alright, looks like a lot of these places are done now. Maybe just, just this one left. So we'll start the upgrade. Get all of these to level 2. They don't have their tavern supply met. These are all level 2. They could probably become level 3. What are they missing? Tavern supplies. So this is the problem with our barley. We've got 40 barley, but I, I noticed that people aren't bringing it up. This is why I've tried using... See, it's just stuck there. 40 barley. And I, I reckon it's because we're pulling in so many vegetables all at once that four families just can't carry all this stuff out. I think they only carry one or two things at a time. So, you know, it's 100 vegetables. Yeah. Which is why we need more diverse food. Anyway, what is it? It's October, so we don't need berries or anything like that. No. Ooh, this house is nice. This one that just came in. A little small tier 3 plot. Expand the living space. People can live in there. <laughs> Where are they going to store their firewood? We'll find out. Alright, let's hop back over to Zinol. How's our money now? We've gained 100, and we've gained about 100 influence as well, actually. So that's alright. At least it's slowly trickling up in the background. And have they been building stalls? They have indeed. So that's good to see. Get rid of some of those additional roads that aren't used. The plowing has begun. We have 10 families ready to get building. Now, the trade in this area I've never really paid too much attention to. We don't have enough. Oh, we do have enough for vegetables. Let's go. Trade. So what are we doing over here? At the moment, we are trading. Hmm. We're exporting yarn and firewood. Firewood. Okay. So I guess it's just a very small amount of money coming in. Global market supply critically undersupplied. Prices are much higher than usual. So that's super interesting. Now this is going to change in the next patch, but it's just interesting because it is a global supply. So what the region of swords is buying vegetables at a crazy rate, which means that we could supply vegetables from here and make a lot of money. So it's sort of a way of redistributing the wealth. Right, the regional wealth that goes from swords is now coming to this place, in effect. So let's try it. We'll export some of our uh, vegetables here. I'm going to have to wait to get a bit more money, but we can still export and set a target. So let's say 400. Now we're giving our vegetables to the tithe to get influence, so I don't really want to give too much. But this will bring the supply chain back in order and also generate a lot of money for this place. We'll make four per vegetable. So if you sell 200, it's 800 gold, right? 800 regional wealth. Which in effect is means that these two regions can work together. But I think in the new patch, I believe the pack stations are being removed and you just do this through the trade screen or something like that from what I've heard. Uh, so the trade screen will actually just have options for dealing with your other regions. So interesting. I mean, that seems like a better way of doing it, to be honest. But Or in some ways. But I worry that if you're going to do that, you probably need bigger, more than four families per trading trade post. I would have thought. But... Who am I to say? I haven't seen it yet. Now, we've gone through a lot of our materials here in the Knoll, so I'm just going to put some new people on logging again. Uh, we'll get someone on the saw camp. Saw, uh, saw pit, sorry, not saw camp. The forester's hut, so replanting. I thought I already had people doing this. I guess not. Just make sure we do that all the way out here. Cool, so that's pretty much everyone working on something in this little region. Family members are joining. This is great. What's the problem, though? The, um... Oh, just the day reset. That's okay. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how this little market experiment goes. Are we making our flour now? It doesn't look like it. I don't think we started threshing yet. I guess not until... Maybe the end of autumn. I suppose they're still plowing and sowing at this point. So this one's fallow, fallow... This one will be barley. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see now. They've got the ox on this one, plowing. But it looks like, yeah, he's not doing that part of it. Damn it. 
Next year, I'm going to rebuild this the exact same. And I'm going to wager a little bet with you guys that they will do the full thing. I'm going to say it's a bug. So, I don't know how I can bet through the internet with you like this, but... I guess I'll bet my reputation. <laughs> that I'm going to assume it's not a Morgan size, it's instead just a bug. But we'll see. Oh, we'll see. But it won't be till next year. Yeah, doesn't the place look super dried out? I feel like it does. It's in November. Hmm. Vegetables are looking good, though. No problem there. Man, if a drought hit and we lost an entire year's harvest, this place would be done for. It relies so heavily on the vegetables. And I suppose berries then as well would go, right? Alright, looks like all these things have been upgraded now, so I'm going to go with Tier 3. That is a lot of Tier 3 plots, and have we gotten rid of the... We have. So now, I'm going to get rid of this road, going to get rid of that. This one can go. Alright, we'll see what we can pop in here now. So we need two granaries. Turn off snapping the roads. Just rotate it out. Damn. Can't really get as far over as I'd like. Let's try that, though. Oh, yeah. Nice. So we will be able to fit two here. Just about. Hopefully that works. And then we can bring the road down this way. So that can connect straight over to there. These can connect to each other. Can we squeeze through? We can. Yes. Good. Hmm. Let's bring this right along the side like that. Now, is that room for a house? Let's see. I'm going to say yes. Oh, so close. Oh, yes. But it would be facing out that way. Well, that's weird. Hang on one sec. So we can do it if it faces that way. Could they get in though? Would it matter if there's no road? Let's see. <laughs> Cram them in there. Now, we can now connect this across. Nice. Cool. And our trees have stayed in place. Love it. Alright, we'll speed time up. Let's see how we're doing. We've got so many builders, they're all just like hanging outside the house. I don't know if it's um, maybe a little unusual being in at the back of the church. The church does have a fence going all the way around it. Oh, it looks so nice with the red the red on the trees. I know so easily, like, I, I'm sure everyone is, right? We're all just won over by the visuals. <laughs> but I don't know why I don't remember it being that vibrant before. It must, might have just hit it at a good, just during the sunset, good lighting. But the trees are like this bright red color. It looks so nice. We're playing, playing some Horizon Zero Dawn, and that game has just like an amazing colors, basically, as well. Uh, I played it before, but I'm playing it for the DLC. So I want to play Forbidden West, and um, I never did the DLC, so I've just been going through that. And you're largely up in the, in, uh, the Arc... not the Arctic, but... You're in a frozen tundra kind of area, so it's just white everywhere. But every now and then, you come across patches of just like super vibrant colors. And it just kind of reminds me of that, anyway. Recommend it if you've never played it, Horizon Zero Dawn. If you like third-person open-world games, some of the most fun combat I've ever played, personally, anyway. Wow, we can actually just see in. <laughs> that one doesn't look quite right, how it's coming together. I've never seen that before. We've watched so many of these houses pop up, but I've never seen it go square by square in like that. I think this looks super cute, though. What do you think? Even just here at nighttime. I've, I've kind of come around to the houses that are staggered. People in the comments said they liked them, so... I like them too. If you like them, I like them. Especially at an angle, they look great. I think it's just head-on they look a bit weird. But if you look at it from an angle, it's like, yeah, they look really cool like that. Super cool. These ones are a bit more straightforward, but I like them too, so far. Who's this? Toman, just a generic name. Let's see if we can find any other people from the uh, channel memberships. 
Oh man, there's a bunch of... Oh, Jared what? There we go. Brad actually is um, a channel member. It's just a, that's his under username. CJ Butcher, Left Coast Dad. And Daniel. Alp Tugniki. It's Chad Peterson. What a Chad. And he is a Chad. Look at him. He's got that swagger walk. Chad Peterson. <laughs> All right. Hey, we're starting to mill through some flour. I'd love to see it. Yeah, they're getting busy over there with it. Nice. Loading it all up onto the cart. So do they... So this is the thing I don't really know about the game. What creates hand carts? Is it just the buildings themselves? Because he just loaded like five sacks up into that one. And now he's off moving. She doesn't get one though, you know? There's just classic, classic class divide here. And they're paid the same. Can you believe it? <laughs> um, but yeah, just I don't know. I'd love to know. Or is it because they're warehouse workers? Maybe that's it. That could be the case. So Heinz granary worker, and then she is a miller. Okay, so that must be it, right? So the yeah, okay, that, well there we go, solved it. <laughs> the warehouse workers or granary workers might actually have hand carts built into the building. Makes sense. Cool. Well, there we have it. The first snows have arrived, and our tier three burgers plots are just about done. Is that one getting built? Yeah, it's just taking a while. Oh, look at our cute little house that went in here on the side. Level it up. Could be easily mistaken for a, uh, a granary. All right, speaking of granaries, we'll beef these up. Once they're built, then we'll assign all the families to it. We'll demolish this one and have them move everything over to there. Hopefully, with eight... What will that be? Twelve families on granaries? Because I think they take six each. Um, that should be the distribution that we need for when we start to scale up food production a bit more. At least that's my hope. Speaking of, how's the regional wealth here? Mm, not great. I would have expected by now they've loaded up or sold more vegetables, but they haven't done it yet. Now, we still have that road disconnection problem, so... Maybe I need to rebuild this building or something. Although we saw it doing trades recently, so I don't think it'd be that bad. It might just take a while for them to... Oh, yeah, we didn't actually set up a, uh, a route. So let's do that. So it's food and vegetables. So establish a trade route, please. Regularly visit your region to trade only this specific type of goods. So it's bringing a trader in. You can trade things without that. It's just a dedicated trader for that thing. So hopefully that should encourage it to happen a bit quicker now. Well, the markets don't seem to be phased at all, even while the granaries are being built. Look at this place. The Bora Markets. Super busy. Yeah, so I noticed that the ox have to travel all the way out to the very edge of our town because this is where our logging camps are and this is where we store our timber. So the 56 timber we have is basically here, right? There's 32 there, 29 in that one, and 23 in this one. Put some supplies out on the ground at the moment from a deleted storehouse. So it's interesting because we do have one further in the town. It's almost tempting to build one just like here as a, as a drop box for any time we ever want to do upgrades are building here. Like, if I was to start the game over, which I might do in the future, you know, we complete this and maybe do another series if people want. And there's demand for it, and as the game gets updates, of course we'll be back. But, um, playing on a harder difficulty or something, it might be interesting to build a town where you really factor in where are your logging camps going to go, because that's, like, you know, a big part of how you build and get your materials and stuff from them. It feels like a logging camp should almost go hand-in-hand -hand with a, a storehouse, for the most part. Uh, if you're thinking of construction material storehouses, anyway. Oh yeah, the extra plot that we put into that tiny house is done. Yeah, it looks decent. It's a little bit built right into the other one. I wonder if we reload, will it just shift out just ever so slightly? Sometimes that does happen. Looks okay though, obviously it's totally fine. I'm kind of thinking over here at the Knoll we do something similar that we did on that side. So let's go with burgers plots here in the two corners and then all the way up toward the back. Something like that actually might be fine. Again, one of these houses is a bit more space than I'd like. Maybe we could do something with that. Yeah, that kind of evens it out. I'm getting better with this now, so that's good. So they won't have a secondary house, but these guys will. I'm okay with that. I think they could maybe manage it on their own, just about. Let's commit to it. Now that we've got the regional wealth to do all that, it should be fine. Oh yeah, I just realized, now that we have money, actually, there was a few plots that I never gave vegetables to, so we can do that for them. 
And then I think some of the ones in here, I wanted to have like chickens. So let's do that. Because they have good food variety going on. They've got goats. Ooh, we can actually upgrade this to level 2. Sure, why not? What about any of you guys? Yeah, you could all have stuff at the back as well. So we'll just have a mixture of both. Chickens, goats. It's all good. Nice. Make some of them burgish too. Cool. Yeah, I'm really liking the little area now. It's kind of really come into its own. Alright, winter's been kind of slow, you know, I've been probably cutting through some of it a bit quickly because there's not much happening, I'm just kind of waiting for things to grow for some of these building projects to get done. Trying to zoom in where we can to have a look at things. Especially as this place gets busier and busier now, 336 people. The streets are going to be like super packed. Just saw someone darting across the two houses there a second ago. <laughs> oh, look at this. This looks really nice, doesn't it? Our little church with like kind of a circle of houses almost around it. It's quite cool. I wonder could we fit in one... Like... Actually, we could connect this path here, which would be nice. You could get rid of that shrine. No, it's kind of nice having it as a focal point, I guess. Sure, and the tree that's still there. Love that I've managed to somehow keep some of these trees in place. One or two of them might be a little, a little far out there. I wonder, could we look to cut down specifically one tree? So if we get this guy, we go like this. I'd like to get rid of the one that's sticking out just here, just really far. So we can do that. How about that? Right, the next thing I'm going to do, which is going to be a little painstaking, so I might just speed through it, but I want to get rid of many of the stalls that don't have anything on them. Oh, actually, our granary is done, so let's get that up and running. And then I'm going to take everyone off this one. And it's winter, but I'm just going to do it. Deleted. 400 meat just sat out there in the cold. We'll see what happens. Put some pressure on us, maybe. See if any of it spoils. So then the next thing I want to do is just like delete any, anything that doesn't have anything in it. Because I feel like they're just not being used. So I'm just going to do that now real quick. Interestingly, some of them actually do say abandoned when hovering over, so... Alright, so I've just done a little bit of reorganization as well. So now the storehouses that are here are basically operated by anyone that lives like immediately around this area. The same with the granaries. So I've got more that I can assign here, but I'm waiting on some of these houses to get finished. But ultimately, I'm just going to pull them in and have them work basically, you know, near where they live. Yeah, that's the goal, and then I'm hoping that they'll set up stalls as well, and that'll just smoothen out some of the logistics of things. At least that's the idea. So interestingly as well, what's happening now is new food stalls are being built. I must have deleted maybe 20, and then I reassigned the granaries, and I reassigned the storehouses, so now things are just being reinitialized and being rebuilt. So we'll see if food distribution is any better as a result of that, or any quicker as well. Because uh, I noticed a lot of sort of, quote, inefficiencies, right? A lot of these houses were populated by people that worked the trader and stuff like that and worked really far out of town. So now they work really close by. Hopefully it helps a little bit. Now, in doing that reassignment, it means that certain families were taken off whatever jobs they were doing. So I kind of have to go around and figure out, like, are we really lacking on anything now? Uh, I suppose the, f suppose the food is probably the most important. So there's no one on the tannery anymore, so that's something. So yeah, let's just get a few people on that. Let's burn through it. We've got so many hides. I imagine we can make a lot of leather, because we got none right now. So yeah, let's get that tannery overflowing, please. Hunting camp still has its families on it, although we're lacking one. I used to have three on it, so let's do that. Alright, so that should work out a little bit better. I like the look of the market now, just with a few gaps around it. I know it's just kind of coincidence or whatever, but... Ah, oh, you're pa patching in those gaps. It looks kind of nice with the gaps, because it did just fill from right to left previously, and now it's going to just, like, fill in the spots, which is kind of cool. A lot of food stalls. A lot of food stalls. All right, well, anyway, we'll leave them to it. They've still got a little bit of building going on over there. Um, and we'll hop back over to the knoll, if I could find it. All right, so what's the situation here? This will be us wrapping up, I guess, because winter is basically over. We'll start the next episode as we go into March and found that new city, right? So we're at 500... And 50 treasury, so we could do 500 for a settlement. Got nearly a thousand influence, so get them on the fast track to build in a, a manor and a church. 
and growing. Obviously, obviously it's going to take them about a year to do that anyway. And then maybe we'll get our influence ready for uh, the, uh, the attack on the next region. I can also fill this in now. Veg, please. And veg. Get that going at the beginning of next year. And then we'll also start building out the farms up this way. And then all the extra stuff that's going to go down here for them. More houses, a market, that sort of thing. Got to look at actually where a well could be placed. Uh, it's kind of annoying. Not really a good spot down here. It's not too bad. We could have one maybe up here or something, and then another one there, and another one over on the side. But it would have been nice if we could have fit something around there. Oh. It's quite a high-level episode, this one. I hope people didn't mind too much. Just a lot of building to do, really, so... Just trying to get it done quick. Uh, no problems. We're still keeping ahead of our food and our fuel. There's no issues there. Populations are growing. Approval's high. Can't complain. Just waiting on some numbers to tick on up. Quite happy with this region in particular. I think it looks quite nice. I think it all looks great, actually, just overall. Um, and then swords under heavy redevelopment, but half of it looks good now, I think. Basically this half. <laughs> this half looks okay. Still, you know, burns the street is being devoured. But I just need to do something with the back half of this place. doesn't need to be the exact same as what's in front of it. We have to shake that up a bit, make something a bit more interesting, I think. But I think the now two granaries in front of the market across from two storehouses with a tavern and a church right here. This is looking kind of ideal. I'm quite happy with that. And some of our bigger plots as we get further and further out. So I think we'll have to leave it there. So just a heavy, heavy building episode. We must have built maybe like 50 buildings in this one, including upgrades. And we grew quite considerably in terms of population and everything seems to be totally fine. So yeah. Pretty good. All right, it's going to have to be it for me. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.